I want to share my story too. My name is Carl and I'm 73. My GFR has been declining steadily for as far back as I have records, but my doctor never told me anything until June of 2022. It hit 33 last April. Also, my doctor told me that he didn't like the amount of protein in my urine. I knew it was getting serious and I decided to do something about it. I did some research and I started watching your channel among other things. I made some dietary changes, I stopped eating meat and using dairy products, but I did backslide once in a while. Realistically, I went from eating meat almost every meal to eating meat maybe twice a week and using dairy products multiple times a day to maybe sparingly two to three times a week. Little cheese on my potato, etc. I also upped my exercise to four to five times a week as opposed to around twice a week. And one thing that you said stuck in my mind. Almost all kidney disease patients have a vitamin deficiency and that causes protein in the urine. So I decided to test for vitamin deficiencies and they found out that I was too low on three different things. So my doctor gave me hydrofirol 0.266 milligrams and vitamin B12. I went to my kidney doctor yesterday and my GFR had increased to 55 and my proteinuria is back to normal. According to the eGFR mortality tables, I've increased my life expectancy by a decade at least. So I want to thank you because my doctor would have never tested for vitamin deficiencies without me asking for that. And he says that it could have made a difference. Thank you, Cara, for sharing your story. And well, going from a GFR of 33 to 55, is amazing that's something you should be very proud of because you are taking control of your health and i can tell you that this is one of the best things you can do in your life so congratulations and guys carl's story is giving me the occasion to talk about one of the most dangerous hidden causes of kidney damage vitamin deficiencies so why should you care about vitamin deficiencies? You see, vitamin deficiencies are not taken as serious as they should by today's medical practice. And that's a fact. I mean, every time a new study about vitamin D, for example, comes out, the results are more terrifying. Recently, a study analyzed the serum levels of 759 cigarette sufferers in all the stages of the disease. What this study found out is that all of the CKD patients examined had vitamin D deficiency. But you see, today, not nearly enough kidney disease patients are being treated and in most cases not even tested for vitamin deficiencies, which is a serious problem. I mean, Carl's doctor never told him to test for vitamin deficiencies. He only did that because he learned about this issue here on this channel. And I'm wondering if any of you guys is receiving appropriate testing for vitamin deficiencies. So please let me know in comment section because I think this is important for everyone. Has your doctor ever prescribed you a test for vitamin levels? Let's talk about it in comment section. Let's share our experiences. This is a very important issue because it is a well-known fact that certain vitamin deficiencies can lead to a faster decline in kidney function, to proteinuria, to kidney damage. But you know, having any vitamin deficiency at all is very serious. Heart problems, bone problems, nerve damage, anemia, impaired immunity, and more can all be caused by some of the most vitamin deficiencies in people with CKD. And in order to avoid these problems and to have a chance of improving kidney function, we need to know more about these dangerous deficiencies. So question, what are the most common vitamin deficiencies in people with CKD? Well, let's start with the deficiencies that affected Carl. Very first thing I want to talk about is vitamin B12. 
and I'm glad Carl was able to take care of this deficiency because it can cause serious issues. Having too low vitamin B12 levels can significantly increase the risk of developing anemia, a condition that can cause severe damage to your kidneys. Anemia reduces oxygen delivery to the kidneys, impairing their functions and triggering a vicious circle of kidney damage and anemia. Vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, is a water-soluble vitamin. This vitamin deficiency is very common. According to statistics, up to 1 in 3 people with kidney disease has this deficiency, and this is very concerning. This vitamin is essential for blood formation as well as brain and nerve function. Question: Who should be testing for this deficiency? Anyone following a plant-based diet and not taking B12 supplements should be testing for this deficiency. This is because no plant-based food contains B12, which means you are going to need to supplement it. Additionally, people with gastrointestinal issues may be at risk for malabsorption, meaning that a regular multivitamin won't be enough. This may also be true for those taking proton pump inhibitors or metformin. So ask your primary care physician to test you for B12 deficiency, especially if you are in any of these categories. And there are very few foods with significant amount of B12 that are also suitable for a renal diet. This is why most CKD patients are recommended to supplement 6 micrograms of B12 per day even if they are not deficient. A deficient is usually treated with higher doses, but that's something a doctor must prescribe. Now from Carl Paz, the other thing he was prescribed is hydrofuerol, and I believe it really helped him. So what is hydrofuerol and why is that so helpful for people with kidney disease? Hydrofuerol is just the commercial name of a special form of vitamin D called calcifidiol. As I was saying, almost every single CKD patient is low on vitamin D. And that's not because they don't eat enough foods with vitamin D or because they don't sunbath enough. It's because the kidneys are a key part of the body's process to convert vitamin D3 from sun, foods and supplements into the active form the body can use. What's more, having the correct vitamin D level is also crucial for kidney health. A deficiency in vitamin D is directly linked to proteinuria, a predictor of declining kidney function. What's scary is that almost every single kidney patient has dangerously low levels of this vitamin. So this is something we can all learn from Carl's story. Make sure your levels of vitamin D are in order, get tested for this vitamin and supplement adequately if you care about your kidneys. Now studies today are pointing out that giving just regular vitamin D3 to people with kidney disease stage 3 or more is not enough because their kidneys may not be able to activate enough vitamin D3. So what is usually recommended is to supplement a form of vitamin D that's already activated. Today there are several activated forms of vitamin D available that your doctor can prescribe to you. These medications are called vitamin D analogs. These include calcitriol, paracalcitol, calcifidiol and more. So yeah, not everyone is going to be prescribed 0.266 mg of hydrofuerol like Carl did. That's a monthly dose, by the way. The correct type of vitamin D analog depends on your serum levels and on your thyroid hormone levels. Blood analysis are required for your doctor to make the right prescription if you need a vitamin D analog. And by the way, I'm not surprised at all that this vitamin helped Carl so much, especially with proteinuria. You see, what a recent study found out is that Correcting a vitamin D deficiency may result in 34% lower protein in urine. Now this will make a huge difference as I was saying because your proteinuria level is a direct predictor of your future kidney function and vitamin D level is also linked to inflammation and scarring in the kidneys. So make sure you are not overlooking this vitamin. Question: Is taking vitamin D or an analog alone enough? When it comes to vitamin D, there are other very common vitamin deficiencies that must be addressed because they are all connected. First of all, magnesium. Magnesium and vitamin D are connected and supplementing vitamin D without magnesium will be unwise. 
Magnesium is a mineral that's involved in many biochemical reactions, including the synthesis and metabolism of vitamin D. Without enough magnesium present, vitamin D is stored in the body and not used. So, if you start taking vitamin D, the body may use all the magnesium it can to actually benefit from this vitamin D. But this may actually cause your magnesium levels to be depleted, which is absolutely not something you want. A magnesium deficiency can cause your blood pressure to skyrocket, very bad for kidney health. Magnesium is extremely important to keep your body and kidneys functioning properly. Recently, magnesium made the headlines because low levels of this mineral were linked to a faster decline in kidney function and earlier end-stage renal failure. Research also linked increasing magnesium intake to reduce water retention. And magnesium deficiency is so common that if you are having frequent muscle cramps or troubles focusing and sleeping, magnesium deficiency should be investigated as a cause. In short, if you are supplementing vitamin D, which you probably should, also take magnesium. According to recent studies, taking 300 to 400 mg daily of magnesium oxide is the best way of keeping this mineral in the correct range. But while you should always take vitamin D in the morning, I recommend to supplement magnesium in the evening though, since it helps you sleep. There is another vitamin that's crucial to supplement when supplementing vitamin D. I'm talking about vitamin K2. Because one of the main functions of vitamin D is to transport dietary calcium throughout your arteries. Vitamin K2 helps make sure the calcium ends up where it belongs absorbed by your bones. Without enough vitamin K2, patients supplementing vitamin D have been found to be more at risk of vascular calcification, absolutely not something you want. A very important question, what vitamins are all kidney disease patients supposed to supplement? We have already seen how important it is to supplement vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin K2, and magnesium. But those are not the only deficiency you may be at risk for if you have kidney disease. In fact, while for the general population vitamin supplements are not really that useful, it's different for people with kidney disease. There are more vitamins that almost everyone with kidney disease may benefit from. One of the vitamins you need the most is vitamin C. Vitamin C is widely known for its function as an antioxidant. It actively improves immune health and protects the kidneys from oxidative stress. Remember that if you want to fight kidney disease and diseases in general, you need as many antioxidants as possible. Vitamin C is especially recommended to those following a potassium restriction. You see, some of the best vitamin C sources such as citrus fruits, bell peppers, papaya, broccoli, tomato, kale are also very rich in potassium. If you don't eat these foods regularly, you may need a supplement to keep the level of this vitamin in the right range. And yes, supplementing vitamin C in a low dose of 60 to 100 milligrams a day is a valid strategy to help the kidneys. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to vitamin C, you don't need a special form like for vitamin D, but not all the supplements you can find are right for people with CKD. First of all, because they are mostly in too high doses. Sometimes you can even find 1000 milligrams of vitamin C supplements and that's 10 times more what you need. No good. Do not take more than 100 milligrams of vitamin C per day without a prescription from your doctor. Also, there are two forms of vitamin C present on the market, sodium ascorbate and ascorbic acid. They are not the same. Sodium ascorbate is not safe for those on a low sodium diet. Sodium ascorbate contains sodium or salt, which is known to increase blood pressure. Always prefer ascorbic acid. Another vitamin that is really important for kidney health. This one fights diabetes, anemia and cholesterol. Vitamins of the big group. All the vitamins of the big group should be supplemented when battling CKD. They all can help boosting your kidney health. B1 and B7 protect you from diabetes. B3 fights cholesterol. B6, B9 and B12 are crucial for anemia. Vitamin B6 is frequently too low in people with kidney problems and it's crucial for the nervous system and immune system. Vitamin B2, riboflavin, boosts the immune system and fights headaches. Vitamin B3 or niacin helps with cholesterol, B5 fights stress, B7 and B1 lower blood sugar in diabetes. 
In short, if you have CKD, you may need to focus on vitamin supplements in a way that the general population doesn't need to. There are many vitamins you actually need to protect your kidneys, but unfortunately, while the general population can, you know, just take a centrum or a random multivitamin from the supermarket shelves, people with CKD should avoid anything containing vitamin A or vitamin E. Now, if you are in a rush, there are multivitamins specifically made for people with kidney problems. Some of the most known include Renovite, Nephrovite, Prorena Plus. You can find some links in the description, by the way. But you see, I usually recommend getting informed more about vitamins since they really are crucial for you as we learn from Carl's story. There are so many people suffering from vitamin deficiencies, most without even knowing it that I strongly recommend getting tested regularly and supplementing accordingly. And you see, I've also made a video to explain how to make your own multivitamin if you can't find a renal multivitamin that suits your needs. Link is up here and also down in the description. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.